Relatives of an Indian man who died in Russia are petitioning the government to bring his body back to his village, according to Reuters. His family says the individual was killed after being forced to fight in the war in Ukraine. Ravi Moon, 21, wasn't the first victim of such a practice. Earlier, several men contacted India's foreign ministry, saying they were duped into traveling to Russia, where they were promised jobs or education. But upon arrival to the country, they were forcibly recruited into the Russian military. Ravi Moon was also contacted by an agent who promised him a job. His relatives lost contact with him in May 2024 and later found out about his death. Families of forcibly recruited individuals appealed to the diplomatic facilities with a request to free the men. Russia promised New Delhi that Indians duped into joining its army would be discharged. A few days later, the Indian embassy in Moscow informed Moan's relatives of his death without elaborating on the circumstances under which he died. Previously, the AFP reported that Russia's recruitment drive is part of a broader global effort by Russia to bolster its forces, in addition to a significant domestic campaign. Moscow is believed to have recruited thousands of foreign fighters, including hundreds from Nepal, India's economically challenged neighbor, Cuba, Serbia and Central Asian countries. India is a long-standing ally of Russia, has refrained from explicitly condemning the invasion of Ukraine. More than two years since Russia's war started, tens of thousands of its soldiers have been killed in Ukraine. India's foreign ministry last week said that the government was still working with Russian authorities to repatriate around 50 Indians fighting alongside the Russian army. According to Indian media reports, four other Indian soldiers have died so far this year. Indian authorities have apprehended several people accused of trafficking citizens of the country to fight for the Russian army. The people have opted to travel to Russia for fighting against Ukraine as the unemployment remains high in India and huge numbers seek work abroad each year. A war between North and South Korea could cost the world economy $4 trillion, which is estimated at 3.9% of global gross domestic product, according to Bloomberg. The author reminded that 26 million people live in the mentioned agglomeration. The article noted that a possible military confrontation would be the largest scale war in terms of the number of casualties. According to the article, during a military conflict, large industrial corporations such as Samsung Electronics may suffer serious damage. According to the author's claim, such companies which produce 41% of drum chips and 33% of the NAND microcircuits required for the South Korean army will become the target of North Korea's ballistic missiles. Among the biggest buyers of Samsung electronics are China and the USA. Bloomberg analysts also report that in the first 365 days of the war, GDP production in South Korea may decrease by 37.5% and in the United States by 2.3%. So, a full-fledged war on the Korean peninsula could kill millions of people and cost the global economy $4 trillion in the first year, according to a Bloomberg economics study. This is more than double the damage caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We Sungrak, a former head of the Korean Peninsula Peace Negotiation Headquarters, said, there is a 30% chance of a small-scale close race on the Korean Peninsula within a few years, adding, it is the most serious situation since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Bloomberg Economics pointed out that in addition to the war, the collapse of the Kim Jong-un regime is one of the scenarios leading to a crisis on the Korean Peninsula. If the Kim Jong-un regime collapses, the most urgent issue for the US South Korea and China is to secure North Korea's nuclear weapons, he said. North Korea may also be emboldened to try a nuclear test due to cooperation with Russia that the US and South Korea said includes arms transfers to help President Vladimir Putin in his assault on Ukraine. Kim pledged to provide unconditional support to Putin for his military efforts in Ukraine when the Russian president last month made his first visit to North Korea in 24 years.